ordinary horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ring. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! The adobe and stone walls of territorial prison were cold and foreboding in the gray light of early dawn. In a few moments, the sun would rise and flood the scene with stifling, glassy heat. But now the coldness seemed to penetrate even to a small room off the open courtyard was the room where condemned prisoners waited for the firing squad to assemble. It was the room where Bragg Potter had reached the end of a long and lawless trail. Now, only one thing remained between Bragg Potter and eternity. A few words with Fred, his son. He's right in here. Freddy. Oh, sorry I can't leave you two alone. There's not much time. It's against the rules. It's all right. We understand. I'm sure glad to see you, son. Glad to see you, Pa. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, Freddy. Just being able to see you is good enough for me. Got here as quick as I could. When do they... I mean, when does... The sunrise. That's liable to be any minute now. It ain't fair, Pa. Why should they kill you and Frank Bisbee and Chuck are still free? Because the law got me... They haven't got Frank and Chuck. And it won't be a killing, Fred. When I walk in front of that firing squad, it's a legal execution. I don't figure it that way. You were double-crossed into this thing. And I'm going to see that the Bisbees get what's coming to them. No, son. That's a law's job, not yours. Oh, you must be local. I'm talking sense, Freddy, for the first and last time in my life. Well, that's not my kind of sense. I knew you'd feel this way, son. That's the main reason I wanted to see you before I check out. What do you mean? In the few minutes that are left to me, I'm going to try and change a mistake I've made ever since you were born. Oh, now, Pa, you Now, gotta... listen to me, son. Your mother died when you came into the world. That was something I didn't expect. Made me a little bit crazy, I guess. I was broke, so I wrestled money any way I could. You raised me all right. No, I didn't. I raised you to be an outlaw, a thief and a killer just like I am. Oh, I rode the owl who trailed together all these years. Now I've reached the end of it. Talk like that ain't making this any easier. Bro. I don't want to make it easy. I 
What's you remember? Well, all I can think of is Frank and Chuck Bisbee and how they crossed. I was as guilty as they were. But they got away. Now we'll get him. Sometime. <laughs> Freddy, don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? No, I don't. Get right with the law, son. Or you'll end up just like me. I'll get along all right. Since I've been out of circulation, you've been running with Matt Clausen's gang, haven't you? Maybe. Please, Freddy. Give it up. Get an honest job. Bunching cows, mining, anything. So the law's not trailing you. Otherwise, you can't win. Oh, I've never heard you preach. I'm not preaching. I'm telling you the truth. Promise me you'll quit, Freddy. Please. You're my pa. But I can't make any promise like that. Not as long as the Bisbees are alive. All right. If you won't change for my sake, maybe you'll do it for yourself. Well, how do you figure? I've done a lot of thinking since I've been in here, Freddy. And this is the way it all adds up. You, me, all outlaws are always in the middle of gunplay. We live by bullets and we die by bullets. If we changed our way of living... We might improve our way of dying. Paul, Don't I... ever forget that, Freddy. No matter how long you live. Time's up, Frank. All right. I'm ready. Bye, Freddy. Bye, Paul. I... Come on, Bragg. Sure. Why not? Seen hiding her hair of him, Matt. He lit out for somewhere last night. He hasn't come back. He should be here by now. I know where he went. Yeah? Where? Over to Territorial Prison. Bragg Potter, the kid's old man, had a date with a firing squad this morning. Oh, that's right. I'd clean forgot that Bragg's number was coming up. And the law didn't forget. Too bad, too. Bragg was a handy old codger with his guns. Huh. So was the kid. I wish he'd hurry up and get here. We've got a big job due before the day's over. Now, how about the Bisbee boys? They working with us? Yeah. Uh, you might have some trouble there, Matt. I don't think Freddy will cotton to the idea of working with Frank and Chuck Bisbee. He'll do whatever I say. Oh, I cut the kid in at all. Can't five of us handle a stage holdup? Sure. Freddy's the only one who can handle a team of horses. We need him. They're splitting this thing too many ways. Now, wait. The job ain't over yet. What do you mean? We're bossing it, ain't we? Hey, somebody coming. Hey, it's Freddy. Both of you keep shut now. I'll do the talking. Oh, hold there. Oh, steady. Hello, Freddy. Hello. Curly kept some coffee hot for you. Figured you'd want breakfast when you got back. Thanks. Guess you don't feel so good, do you, kid? That's a tough jolt to see your old man. I didn't see it. Just heard it. Too bad. Well, that's the way it goes. None of us ever know when... Yeah, that's what Pa told me. Said we live by bullets and we die by bullets. I guess your pa had it figured about right, Freddy. Our job is to see that we're the ones who do the living. Yeah. Got something lined up for this afternoon, kid. What is it? Wells Fargo stage. Carrying 50,000 gold. Sounds all right to me. When do we do it? About sundown. It's a regular stage run. Comes through town here, then heads for Gunnison Pass to Hartville. Oh. Shouldn't be much trouble. A little more than usual. There'll be two extra guards riding saddle horses. Well, what do we do? I got it all figured out. Listen. Curly and Duke and me will ride over to Clear Creek. Board the stage there like ordinary passengers. What do I do? Uh, wait a minute. When we're about a mile out of Clear Creek, we'll take care of the driver, the guards, and any other passengers that might be along. No killings. We'll just tie them up and leave them by the road. Sure. Then we meet you. 
You being the only one who can handle a six-horse stage team. From there, we line out for Gunnison Pass. When we get to the top, where the big drop-off is, we take the gold, push the stage over the cliff, and head for the timber breaks. Well, how about the two extra guards riding saddle horses? Stage goes through two towns between here and Gunnison. The law knows about the guards, and they're not with it. That's where we need help. Got that figured, too. Bisbee boys are going to work with us. Bisbee? You mean Frank and Chuck? Who else? Boy, those low downs. Now, wait, can... Freddy. I know what's eating you. You figure the Bisbee should have gotten the same thing your pa got this well, morning. Well, they're just as guilty as Pa Why was. don't you forget it? Just doing one job with Frank and Chuck don't mean they'll be with us from now well, on. Well, I don't like those hombres, and I don't want any part of them. They're going to be with us. But then I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. You ain't forgetting I'm running this outfit, are you? No, Matt, but I... You're going to ride over to the canyon east of town. Frank and Chuck are holed up in a shack out there. You'll meet Curly Duke and me on the main road right out of Clear Creek at sundown. I... All right, Matt, I'll do it. Well, that's better. Mind if I start now? Start whenever you want to. I saw the Bisbee boys last night. They'll be expecting you. Then I'll see you later. On the Clear Creek Road at sundown. Yeah. I told you the kid wouldn't think much of the idea working with Frank and Chuck. Got kind of hot, didn't he? All yeah. I'm interested in is getting that stage to the top of Gunnison Pass. After that, I don't care what the kid does to the Bisbees or what they do to him. You know, Matt, it'd be a lot simpler splitting that gold three ways instead of six. Yeah. That's what I mean. In a small trailside camp near the Clear Creek Road, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan were preparing their midday meal. We need some more water, Dan. Sure. There are mountain spring near canyon. Oh, give me the canteens. I'll fill them up. Uh, yeah. Get back as soon as you can, Dan. I'll hurry. As Freddy Potter rode toward the shack where Frank and Chuck Bisbee were waiting, there was no doubt in his mind as to what he was going to do. He would finally come face to face with the men whom he felt were responsible for his father's death. The minute he sat at the shack, he reined up sharply. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, there, Steady. Steady, boy. <laughs> here so they won't spot me before I see them you wait here boy I'll be back just as soon as I get rid of a couple of rattlesnakes I wonder where Dan is Tonto shouldn't take him this long to walk to the spring and back well, maybe water heavy him walk slow it's unusual for him to take so long. Damn, oh, damn, come now. Oh, golly, I ran almost all the way back. Here, here's the water, Tonto. Uh, what were you, you running for, Dan? Right over there in that field behind the poplar trees, there's a little shack. And just a minute ago, a man rode almost up to it. Then he got off his horse and started toward the shack. There's nothing wrong in that. Yeah, but he's walking awful slow. And he has a gun in each hand. Oh. Come on. We'll see what it's all about. There. See, there he is. He's almost reached the shack. Do wait here for a minute. Listen. All right, you good beast cunts. Put your hands and come out shooting. You heard me. I said come out shooting. Golly, he's going to... Wait, Dan. All right, if you're too yellow to come out in the open, I'm coming in after you. They're loose. Might have known they'd be too yellow to stick around. Gosh, he's... Watch out, Dan. Don't make any noise. All I want to do is stand up on this log, so I... Gee, I slipped. It's too late to worry. He heard it. Well, maybe... You over there. Are you trying to dry gulch me, huh? Come out from behind that tree. And you'd better come a-shooting. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. 
Fred Potter didn't know that the Bisbee brothers had lost no time in dashing from the neighborhood and were at the moment far away and going farther to avoid being shot. He didn't know that they'd fled that part of the country for good. He thought the men he heard in hiding were the Bisbees. He shouted a challenge at the Lone Ranger, Dan, and Tonto. Come on, I tell you. Come out of there. I got you covered. Before the Lone Ranger answered Fred Potter's challenge, he spoke quickly to Dan and Tonto. Down, both of you. Hug the ground. Uh -huh. I said to come shooting. All right, I'll shoot. Oh, my gun. I just shot it out of your hand. Don't try to use the other one. I have you covered. Mast. You Bisbees are too yellow to shoot. All right, you've got me. Go ahead and shoot. I don't want to kill you. You're a Bisbee, aren't you? No, I'm not. Well, who are you? Maybe you'd better answer the same question. It ain't any secret. Fred Potter. And who are these men you wanted to shoot? Frank and Chuck Bisbee. Any reason for it? Because a double-crossing scum turned my paw over to the law. I see. He was executed this morning in territorial prison. You and your father were outlaws, huh? Well, what of it? So are you, or you wouldn't be wearing that mask. Maybe. There's one thing you can be sure of. My name isn't Bisbee. Well, you don't talk like one of them. You could have shot me. I owe you something for not plugging me. No, you don't. Say, I know what I can do. Do you want to grab some money? A lot of money? Grab? Well, if you're playing a lone hand, you'll fit right into this thing. What is it? Wells Fargo stagecoach. Carrying 50000 in gold. We're going to take it over tonight. Oh, who's we? Matt Clausen's gang. I've been working with him ever since Paul was sent away. You've been an outlaw quite a while, haven't you, Fred? All my life. You must not want to live very long. A bullet will get you sooner or later. What's that? I say every outlaw should know that a bullet will get him sooner or later. Oh, that's funny. Pa told me almost the same thing this morning, just before that. Now, what did he say? He said, we live by bullets and we die by bullets. And then he said, if we'd change our way of living, we might improve our way of dying. Your father must have been a very smart man, Fred. Yeah, I guess he was, but... Well, what do you say? Do you want to be dealt in on this stagecoach job? When's it going to happen? Tonight. Right after sundown on the Clear Creek Road about a mile west of here. You see, Matt and Duke and Curly are going to take over first. They'll get rid of the driver and the guards. Then I drive the stage up to Gunnison Pass. Why go up there? Well, so we can have plenty of time to get the gold out of the strong box. And then get rid of the stage. Over the cliff. Why can't you and I reach the stage before Matt Clausen and his gang take over? You mean cross him up? No, no, it's too late for that now. They've already met it. And we'll have to wait till later. Yeah. Say, you'll fit right into this thing. Oh, you think so? Sure. You see, I was supposed to get these two hombres, Frank and Chuck, to go in with us. But I figured my business with them was more important than this. How are they going to help you? Well, there are two saddle guards traveling with the stage. That's what they were going to do. You can do it alone just as well. I have a friend who can ride with me. Oh, yeah? Well, that's better. Matt's riding the stage so he won't see you. No need of telling him till we get to the pass. All right. Get your friend and meet me on the Clear Creek Road in about an hour. We'll be there. Adios. Hey, wait. You still haven't told me your name. Does it make any difference? No, but you didn't shoot when you could have nailed me. Forget it. If you want to remember anything, think of what your father told you. time. You ride into Clear Creek, Dan. See the sheriff. Tell him what we've found out and ask him to form a posse. Sure. Here, Victor. I don't know. I'll meet the stagecoach and ride with it. Just as Fred Potter wants us to. It's a long way to Gunnison. Suppose you're gone when the sheriff gets there. If there's any way possible, we'll hold them. Now hurry. Come on, Victor. What do we do now, Kima Sally? Go down to the road and wait. <laughs> Here it comes, Tonto. Ah. Tonto the driver. Him, Fred Potter? I think so. We'll know in just a minute. Yes, it's Potter, and he sees us. Oh, oh, you crazy. Oh. What's the idea, kid? You well, this is where we pick up the Bisbee boys. Well, they're right over there. Get up, you! Well, wait a minute. How do you know they're here? Because well, I just saw them. They'll follow us. That's what you want, isn't it? Get up, boys!
Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. How far to Gunnison Pass, Tuttle? That plenty far. Take four, maybe five hours. I'm sure, Sheriff, that if you'll take some men over to Gunnison Pass, you can head them off. Now, wait a minute, son. You're telling a mighty big story here, and there's nothing to support it. The stage came through town today, didn't it? Sure it did, and there was nothing wrong then. Charlie Grimes, the driver, is a good friend of mine. I talked to him myself. Yeah, but you don't know what might have happened after it left here. No, but... Now, listen, bub. I can't go running off on a wild goose chase just because you get to... Sheriff! <laughs> Sheriff! What's wrong? Cal Pickett just rode into town. Found four men bound and gagged on the road west of here. What's that? The stage must have been held up. Three of the men are Wells Fargo guards, and the other is Charlie Grimes. Grimes? <clears throat> Get out of my way, son. I'm running for a man to ride to Gunnison Pass. And I'm riding with you, Sheriff. Almost the top of the pass, Matt. I'm climbing steady for the last hour. Curly, look out the side and see if those two hombres are still tailing us. In the Bisbee boys? Yeah, they're still back there. About a hundred yards behind. Good. The only trouble with that is they're not Frank and Chuck Bisbee. What? Not Frank and Chuck? I got a good look at them when we picked them up. One's an engine, the other hombre's wearing a mask. Well, how could they Shut be? Shut up and get smart. Can't you see what's happened? Our friend who's driving his rig is figuring a double cross. You mean Potter? Why, I'll... Wait, there's nothing we can do now. Have to wait until we stop on top of the pass. I'll drill him the minute we get out of here. No, you won't. You'll listen to me. This is what we'll do. We're here, Matt. This is a top. All right, get a move on, boys. Let's get this over with. All right, all right Matt. Better set the brake on this thing, Freddy. She's mighty close to the edge. The brake's set, all right. Come on, Curly. You and me will unhitch the horses. We'll use the best ones to ride out of here. Wait, I'll help you. Oh, you won't, Freddy. You'll sit right there. What's the idea of pulling a gun on me? Uh, when I get up there next to you, Freddy, I'll explain. Now... Yell for those two hombres you passed off as Chuck and Frank Bisbee. What do you mean? I said yell. Tell them to come up here. And do what I say, you double-crossing coyote. I... Frank! Chuck, come on! Oh, Silver, oh, boy. Oh, 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 well, Freddy, you made the trip all right. Yes, I... Watch out! I know you're not Frank! Trigger that gun once more, I'll blow you into a million pieces. Back up us, Toto. Uh, drop your guns. Drop them. What we do? Do what he says, Toto. We've got to play for time and hope that Dan is bringing the sheriff. Throw down them guns. There they are. Now climb off of them horses. Steady, big fella. <laughs> Keep your hands up. Team's unhitched, Matt. Good. No need to one of them cayuses. You and me ride this here stallion in the paint. Duke, did you get hurt? Uh, just my arm. I'll be all right. I'll herd these critters off to this side of the road. You keep Freddy and them covered at the same time? Sure. Curly and me will unload the strong box. Come on, Curly. For a moment, Freddy Potter was unable to realize what had happened. Then suddenly everything fitted into a sharp focus. He knew that Matt, Curly, and Duke intended to double-cross him. As soon as they'd taken the goal, they would shoot him and the masked stranger who never killed anyone, even when he had the chance. And Freddy knew he was powerless to prevent it. The blunt end of Duke's gun reminded him of that. He was going to die just as his father had told him he would. Just as he reached this conclusion, he noticed that his left hand still clutched the iron brake handle where he'd locked the wheels of the coach a few moments before. In that instant, Freddy Potter made a decision. A decision from which there was no turning back. He waited until Matt and Curly were inside the coach lifting the heavy strong box. You breath in, Duke. Sure. Stop squirming, Freddy. There's no way you can dodge what's coming to you. That's right, Duke. And neither can you or Matt or Curly. Hey, what the... Turn loose of that break. Don't! Don't! Hey, what's going on? Oh! It's gone over, Toto. Huh. Listen. Did you see what happened? 
Freddy Potter purposely released the brake. Ah, me see it. Him outlaw, but him brave. It took a lot of courage. Many horse come. Dan, bring posse. They'll be able to recover the gold, all right. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. You think Fred Potter saved your life because you didn't shoot him? No, Toto. I don't think that was the only reason, steady big fella. <laughs> I think he might have been keeping a promise he made to his father. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.